Well, I know what you're asking yourself. It's Friday, and it says NXT on this video. And I know also what you're saying is, oh, and you do NXT on Wednesday. Well, normally I do. And I normally wouldn't be getting this video out to you guys so early, but I have a little schedule change this week. Caused by the fact that I'm actually probably, as you watch this, I'm working. So, because of that, things had to change a bit. And let me explain what I mean by that before we get into NXT, a little housekeeping, if you will. So, today, as in Friday, I am working until 5. And at 5 o'clock, AJ and myself are actually going to walk to McDonald's. And we're going to chill out there for about an hour and a half ish and then we're going to go to the theater and it looks like we're going to be watching heaven is for real tomorrow night and then after it's over we're going to go to a haunted house too we watched transcendence last night and we'll uh, discuss that later and of course we have bears on the horizon which we're not watching this weekend because we don't have time. The reason why is because on Saturday, we're shooting the videos, so AJ's movie reviews will come on Saturday, actually. AJ will be reviewing Transcendence. AJ will be reviewing... Mm, Heaven Can... Heaven Can Wait. Wow, long day. Heaven is for real, and... He also will be reviewing... Um, a Haunted House 2. In addition to, there's going to be three limited release movies. The 13 Cents is going to be on there, and there's another movie that AJ is raving about right now, and that's The Raid 2. So The Raid 2 will be uh, reviewed on here on Pop on Saturday. Now, Saturday we also have some plans. We are actually going to Athens, and we're going to watch Under the Skin and The Grand Budapest Hotel. So that will be on next week's video, tacked on with The Quiet Ones, the other woman, and, um, Brick Mansions. So, we're getting really, really lucky when it comes to getting movies on time. So, hopefully this trend will continue. So, other news. I am desperately right now trying to work things out because I'm not wanting to break tradition. And, of course, if you remember, back in... 2012, my first year at Reunion, I stayed at the Polynesian for the night before. Last year at Reunion, I stayed at the Grand Floridian, and this year I want to stay at the Contemporary, or more specifically, Bay Lake Towers. So I'm working on trying to work that out. What I'm thinking I'm going to be doing is I'm trying to stay at Bay Lake Towers from December 2nd to the 4th, checking a pop for Reunion, Reunion ends on the 7th, and on the 7th until the 10th when I leave, check into a DVC property. Not sure if it's going to be someplace I've never stayed before, like Saratoga Springs, or Beach Club, or Wilderness Lodge, which I own at. And there's other places I'd like to stay that I really didn't get a chance to really uh, take advantage of, and that's Boardwalk. And, you know... I want to give another shot to Jumbo House, to be totally honest, because I really had a bad taste in my mouth the last time I stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge, so hopefully I can get another shot at that. September is set right now. Right now I'm waiting for airfare, and that's my issue I have at this very moment. My airfare went up to almost $200 for the first way, so yeah, hopefully that'll be uh, taken care of in some sort of a summer sale. And if not, I may not be flying Southwest. I may be flying United or... Uh, May not be flying out of Columbus, may I be flying out of Charleston, potentially. So, that's where we're going right now. So, like I said, lots of movie reviews. And, of course, a brand new Versus. We're going to war this week, so that's going to be on Sunday. And uh, we look forward to that. And Monday looks like it is going to be SmackDown. And Tuesday will be Raw, and Raw will be late because... Actually, it looks to me like it's a possibility that we may not be, um... Actually, no. I'm going with my old plans. Totally forgot that. Buh. I don't know why I said buh. 
But uh, we're going to Athens on Saturday, so Raw will go as normal. It'll be filmed late Monday night, and it'll be go up, come up on Tuesday morning. And NXT video for next Thursday night, I don't know, maybe, it depends. Might end up getting it up Thursday night, who knows? So who knows what's going on with that. And of course, it is not this week, not this Sunday, but it's next Sunday, and that is... <sighs> The next TNA pay-per-view, so I will be, uh, probably recap, I will recap that, and then I'll go back into TNA recap, so we'll get that taken care of. Gonna do NXT a little differently this week, so we'll do a little bit more of a, um, a chat about NXT in general. Not necessarily focusing on, um, what maneuvers and what matches happen. I do want to talk about the matches, but I do want to talk about storylines as well. So, we get our first match, and this is a feud from back when NXT was obviously only available on Hulu Plus and Bright House Cable, and if you were lucky enough to be at Full Sail. This was Big Cass, Colin Cassidy, and The Artiste, Aiden English. I like these two uh, in the ring together. They actually work pretty well. And it's funny because after Aiden English serenaded the crowd, a fan yelled out Encore, and he just yells back, You wish. So they're finally basically saying, <coughs> excuse me, that Aiden English is a heel. Because the fans want to cheer for him, but he's still a heel. So that tells you right there he's a heel. And basically this match ends up going to the end. And Big Cass ends up going for his finisher, which is called the East River Crossing. Which is a body slam position swung around in a swinging urinagi. And Aiden English took it amongst himself to roll up with the tights, mind you, for the three count big cast, so uh, Aiden English wins, needed to win this match, so it was nice to see Aiden English on the uh, show, uh, rekindling a feud from earlier this year or so, and earlier last year actually, so I'm really interested to see what happens with that, and don't forget, Enzo Amore still has to return to action eventually, and once he does, we'll be interested to see where that goes, to be totally honest, because they really need to do something with their tag team division, and... They did a little bit tonight, but not necessarily enough. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Devin Taylor's in the back with Tyler Breeze, and basically Tyler is just kind of standing there looking all Derek Zoolander, like always. And Devin basically calls him Tyler Breeze, and she's like, um, how about the King of Cuteville or Prince Pretty? And Tyler's like, oh, hey. And... She's like, maybe, do you have something to say? And he's like, no, nope, the episode just needed a little bit more gorgeous. I love Tyler Breeze. I really uh, hope that they do something with him. And like I said, that mid-card championship that I talked about, this is a perfect tool for Tyler Breeze, to be totally honest. So, of course, we get a segment on Paige and the fact that Paige is now the brand new Divas champion. And she's also holding the NXT Women's Championship as well. So she's holding both championships. And she basically is like a kid in a candy store. It's mind-blowing. The fact that she's had this dream for nine years finally come true. She's got a target on her back. She's fully aware of that. But she's also fully aware that she has scouted each and every member of the NXT roster. And each and every member of the WWE roster. And she has all the Divas numbers. And she welcomes any and all challenges regardless for what championship they're going after. Definitely makes mention of the former Divas champion AJ Lee. Says AJ, basically, she got kind of comfortable. And comfortability cost her the championship. And the fact that Sasha Banks and Charlotte have been running their mouth lately. And obviously Paige welcomes that challenge as well. So she says she looks forward to everybody trying, so uh, interesting we go with that. And it sounds to me more and more likely like they're going to have Paige give up the NXT Championship and they'll do some sort of a mini tournament with a lot of the NXT Divas that we haven't yet seen on television yet, plus Sasha Banks, Charlotte, and Bayley. So I'm not sure if we'd involve any of the... Uh, excuse me, quote-unquote WWE Divas, but we'll see where we go with that. After the interruption last week, we got a match between Camacho and Oliver Gray. Uh, this was Gray's 
in-ring return on the network and Camacho debuting on the network as well. Since Unico uh, drifted away and put on the Sin Cara garb and uh, pretty much left Camacho hanging, he's kind of a man without a country. Camacho, in essence, is basically Sean Hernandez. That's pretty much what Camacho is. He's Hernandez. He really is. That basically makes Unico a homicide? Yeah, don't know about that one. But, basically, Oliver Gray ends up getting caught with a running Samoan drop, and that was the three right there. So it was interesting because Camacho got the win. I was kind of surprised they put the win on Camacho, but they kind of need to start building heels right now in NXT. I mean, you got Aiden English as a heel now, and Tyler Breeze is definitely a heel. Camacho is a heel. And then you have a question when it comes to the NXT Tag Team Champions, whether they're heels or baby faces. We don't really know. And, of course, Bo Dallas is a heel, and Corey Graves is a heel, and C.J. Parker is a heel. So, yeah, and Brodus Clay's obviously a heel. So, when it comes down to it, yeah, basically, they have laid it out on the line who's heel and who's babyface. Finally, it's about time. So, Bo Dallas, of course, is with Devin, and he basically makes mention that the Bo Leavers didn't really want to do anything unlawful. So, that's the reason why they didn't occupy NXT last week, like... Bo wanted them to. He says his drive is to win back his championship and that drive will never die. Neither will the Bo movement and don't stop Bo leaving. Yeah, I love Bo Dallas and I think uh, it's going to be awesome to see him on television. I just hope he doesn't get relegated to like a background player right away. Now obviously we have the connection to his blood who is definitely over with the WWE Universe but when it comes down to it, Bo Dallas kind of has a sordid reputation with the WWE Universe, given the fact that the only thing they did with him was the short feud with Wade Barrett after the Royal Rumble. So, I don't know where we'll go with this. Hopefully, Bo Dallas doesn't get lost in the shuffle, and I think he's interesting enough that he'll be fine. We get another matchup. Tag Team Championship on the line again. Connor and Victor, the Ascension, a 197-day Title reign as champions, taking on the team of Wesley Blake and Cal Bishop. Basically, they just throw teams together to face off against the Ascension. The Ascension, of course, ends up finishing off Blake, and it basically ends like it normally does. So Victor hits the STO and tag in and knock Cal Bishop off the ring apron. Fall of Man, one, two, three. So no one can stop the Ascension. And I really hope that they do something with this. Now, here's the thing. The Ascension of definitely are being put over as baby faces right now, in essence. But it's weird because you set up a match later on in this broadcast, which ends up being a six-man with Jimmy and Jay Uso and Sami Zayn against the Ascension and Corey Graves. Thus, aligning the Ascension with Corey Graves makes them heels. Or maybe they'll turn on Corey Graves at the end of the match. Who knows? It could go either way. I really think if they're going to have tag team championships, they can't just keep throwing every person in the roster into a random tag team to face the Ascension and job out. I really think they need to start building tag teams. And they actually did something in the uh, next match, actually two matches down, that actually uh, shows that they really are interested in building a tag team division in NXT. And I really think that a great idea would be to bring the Wyatt family down, obviously. You have it in the people's minds. It was said on commentary tonight, actually, that the Wyatt family are not the longest reigning tag team champions in NXT history. The Ascension are, and that sets up a perfect feud right then and there. And I think it works brilliantly, and I think it will work. And the Ascension working with the Usos is a good idea, because obviously it sounds like the Ascension are getting brought up to the main roster rather quickly. When that happens, obviously you're going to have a matchup between the Usos and the Ascension. So, if you're going to do something with this, then I would take the titles off the Ascension, put them on, you know, actually I put them on Dillinger and Jordan, because they really want to push these guys, and uh, they got to win in a match later on in the show. But like I said, I'm getting ahead of myself. Devin's with the BFFs, of course, without Summer Rae, because Summer is filming a movie right now, and basically Charlotte shouldn't have left Sasha in charge. Sasha's like, huh, what? And, of course, she has to call her a little bit. So there's a tag match next week, and it's going to be Emma and a partner of her choosing against the BFFs. Here comes CJ Parker to the ring. He says, you know, I wonder what the planet would be like if there was no NXT Universe. There'd be no litter in the streets. There would be no 
animals in the zoo and fuel efficient vehicles everywhere. How can you boo a guy who wants to make change, wants to create change? How can you boo a guy who simply cares? And here comes Great Cully. So we get our match that I was dreading all week. Great Cully and CJ Parker. Of course, it finishes with the normal uh, Cully offense. Um, rock hard clothesline twice and then the Punjabi plunge, which kudos to CJ Parker for taking such a vicious bump off that one, too. It looked awesome, by the way. Emma's in the back response to uh, Sasha and Charlotte, and she basically says that she doesn't have a partner, or does she? And she dances away. Sami Zayn arrives to the building, and when they ask about his mental faculties, he says he's fine. He says, you know what, he's not going to question the referee's call. He got caught. Simple as that. But next week, there's going to be a tag team match, the aforementioned match I talked about earlier, Sami Zayn and the Usos against the Ascension and Corey Graves. He says he doesn't like Corey Graves, he doesn't like the person he is, and he needs to put him in his place. So we get our next match, like I said, a tag team match with Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger against Sawyer Fulton and Baron Corbin. Uh, two thrown together tag teams originally. Jordan and Dillinger have been working together on house shows, and Fulton and Corbin aren't a bad tag team, honestly. Corbin hits a vicious lariat earlier on in the match on Jordan, and of course the matchup gets finished with a diving shoulder in the corner from Jordan, and Jordan picks him up, and a DDT out of that pickup, and that's the three count. So Jordan and Dillinger win, and it looks like they're going to start pushing them, so I think that they're going to be the team that take down the Ascension eventually. I think that'll probably be the direction we're going with that, but I really think they're going to need to start building a tag team division. Okay, you got the Ascension of Tag Team Champions of a division that barely exists. You've got thrown together tag teams, you can throw that them out there, whatevs. You got Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger you're starting to build on them. You got Sawyer Fulton and Baron Corbin if they're going to continuously put them together, which they probably will. You can bring in 3MB. I would say you can utilize them because they're not being used on SmackDown or Raw right now, so why not? Why not bring them down? Every tag team I mentioned bringing down NXT all split up, so obviously you can't do anything with them. And there's a lot of things you can do with that, but I really think if they're going to be serious about a tag team division, they need to have like actual challengers for the tag team titles. And I really think that this is going to be Jordan and Dillinger will be the uh, team they're going to go after. They're actually going to try to build the babyface division around them, and I would think at this point they need to focus on the fact that they make the Ascension Hardcore Heels before they leave to go up to the main roster. And I think that putting them with a hated heel like Corey Graves is a great start, but I also see the factor, like I said earlier, that what could end up happening is Connor and Victor just get tired of Graves trying to push them around, and they hit Fall of Man on Connor and leave him laying. So, Connor. God, long day on Corey Graves and leave him laying. I think that may end up happening. So We get our main event, and of course it is a non-title match. It is the main event player, Brodus Clay, against the man that gravity forgot, your NXT champion, Adrian Neville. This match wasn't bad as what it was. Basically, it was about Neville trying to chop the big man down, about Brodus Clay trying to keep <clears throat> Neville grounded. And basically, it ended up with a 450, which Brodus moves out of the way. Neville lands on his feet on it and gets caught with a vicious headbutt. Neville gets knocked all the way to the floor, and basically he slams him on the floor. He climbs up to the top of the ring steps, and he goes for his big splash, and of course, Neville's out of the way. He's back in the ring at 9, and referee counts 10. It's over, so count-out victory for the NXT champion. And Brodus basically said it ain't over, so yeah, this feud will continue. Um, what I took from this show this week, I like Aiden English and Big Cass, I like their chemistry. I think they could have another feud, if now this time on the network. Tyler Breeze, nice little cameo appearance, but he didn't really do anything, obviously. I think he probably uh, wrestles on this week's NXT, like next week's NXT. Paige is trying to face any and all comers, and I think that they're going to really play that up, and I think that's a great idea. Kabacho gets a win, and like I said, we need to build credible heels. When you have an NXT champion that's a solid babyface, you need to build credible heel challengers to go after him. And I think after the program with Brodus Clay, I think that Camacho may end up getting uh, one of those opportunities against Adrian Neville. 
I still think that they end up with Neville against Corey Graves. And I still think that eventually it's going to end up with Sami Zayn against Neville in a respect match. But still, I think that uh, it's a start. And the fact that Camacho beat Oliver Gray, which is Neville's former tag team championship partner, yeah, the seeds have already been planted. So obviously it's like, I beat your former partner and that means I can beat you. So we set up a match between Camacho and Adrian Neville down the line. And like I said, need to bring in tag teams to work with the Ascension if they're going to do anything with the tag team division. CJ Parker, I really, I like the gimmick. I do think it works. His Wonderlust works for me. I will say right now that Kali is not the opponent for him. I put him in with someone else. Uh, Mojo Raleigh's definitely not the opponent for him. Um, I hope they don't, I really don't get, get the gimmick on him at all. I just, I don't like it. I mentioned that in the last NXT video. Emma will probably end up teaming with either Bailey or Natalia against Sasha Banks and Charlotte. I would say more likely Natalia, given the fact that they've already set up the Natalia and uh, Charlotte, the uh, flair heart connection. So that's already been set up before. So I have a feeling that's going to continue. Like I said, building the um, tag team division around Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger, I think, may end up happening eventually. They got matching gear. They're young guys, they can work, and it's just, I think that it's probably going to be a, a foregone conclusion they end up being a cornerstone of the tag team division, at least for this time in NXT. And uh, I like Brodus Clay as the heel challenger to Adrian Neville. I think this program still has some legs, and I think that you do a non-title win for Brodus to win. Brodus didn't get pinned, so that's a good thing. He doesn't lose anything, and Neville gets a count out. So basically, he outsmarted Brodus Clay, so maybe next time Brodus uh, won't let Neville be so lucky, and he grounds him, and he beats him decisively and wins, or cheats to win, like holds the ropes or hooks the tights, something like that. Either way, to get a victory to give him an opportunity at the NXT Championship in a legitimate match, not just a non-title match, so... That was NXT this week, and like I said, there's a lot of um, interesting stuff coming up. Like I said, SmackDown coming on Monday, and we have Raw on Tuesday, and it looks like NXT and SmackDown next week. I don't know exactly when. We'll figure those out when we get there. Let's talk about Pop Schedule. We'll say it one more time, just in case uh, you're joining us late. And uh, sorry if you are. If you are, just hit rewind and just like restart the video. So, that being said, let's talk about this. So today, I'm working most likely as you're watching this right now, and I get off at 5, we're going to walk to McDonald's, hang out at McDonald's for about an hour 40, go back to Regal, and heaven is for real with AJ. After it's over, we're going to watch A Haunted House 2. And Saturday, we're going to come back here, we're going to film the brand new AJ's movie reviews. There's six movies being reviewed on the video, so that's definitely going to be checked out. And a brand new Versus film for Sunday. Of course, we're going to war here. And after we're done with those filming, we're going to go to Athens and watch Under the Skin and the Grand Budapest Hotel. On Sunday, like I said, the new Versus will be up. And I actually... It is Easter. So I'm getting time and a half. Thanks to uh, someone, I am getting time and a half. So yes, uh, kudos for getting time and a half. I work 3 to 11 on Sunday, so that's taken care of. Monday, of course, I have a day off, nice little long, much well-needed day off at this point, and I don't have anything to do. Hopefully, Will and Ben will return, and we'll shoot some more video from them. We'll watch Raw, I'll video Raw, and uh, I'll film the review for Tuesday, and Tuesday, I gotta work again. Don't know what I'm doing Tuesday night yet. Same with Wednesday. Thursday, it looks like it's gonna be Brick Mansions, and Friday, we're going to be watching The Other Woman as well as... Mm, excuse me. Ah, the quiet ones. So, lots of movie content, lots of wrestling content, so stay tuned here on Pop. In the meantime, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe, and help spread the word about Pop. Like our Facebook fan page, Sir Owen Disney Pop. If you'd like to be my friend on Facebook, friend request, it's Owen Disney. Follow me on Twitter, at Sir Owen Disney. Last but certainly not least, if you want to send your thoughts, comments, queries, and opinions, we'll talk wrestling, Universal, Disney, Halloween Horror Nights, anything under the spectrum, or if you'd like to be a podcaster yourself, send your video to Sir Owen Disney at gmail.com. In the meantime, I want to thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.